Hey guys, how's it going? Today, I'm going to be featuring the Allen M. Sumner, the Tier 8 US Destroyer that was just added in the newest update. Now I know in a previous video, I said I would probably go with the battleships first and try to get some videos out on those, but it's turning out to be quite difficult, mainly because it's patch day and the quality of games are not exactly enjoyable and it's just turning out to get be pretty difficult to get any real good content out of the battleships but hopefully soon the battles somewhat return to normal and I can actually get some decent content out of those ships or maybe I'll just post some average game and I guess talk about the ships anyway moving on to this game the Allen M Sumner so if you like the Fletcher or the Gearing, you will very much like the Sumner. And I might uh, go as far to say that the Sumner is actually better than the Gearing. And the reasons I think that it's better is the ship is essentially smaller while having the same amount of guns. So getting hit by shells in the Sumner will happen less often than the Gearing because the Gearing is just so large. Now I'm pretty sure the gearing is actually larger in this game than it should be, just like the PC version where they're going to start updating the US Destroyer models to actually reflect the actual sizes that are proportional in this game. Now this is a CV game and like I said it's patch day and we have players like this who drive in with their carrier for really no reason. Uh, it, honestly happened quite a bit this update I'm not sure if he's thinking carriers have good secondaries since Graf Zeppelin was added but at the same time Graf Zeppelin doesn't even have good secondaries either also some things that weren't actually noted in the patch notes that some of you may or may not know the Conqueror got a buff one of the ships that required one brain cell to play uh, it actually has the defensive AA consumable now and the Charles Martel actually has a main battery reload booster that you can swap out for sonar, much like the Prince Eugen. And lastly, the Saipan got nerfed, mainly in its plain HP by 200 hit points. The bombs and torpedoes, uh, torpedoes alpha damage was also reduced. However, the flooding chance and the fire chance are all unchanged, so I don't think it's really going to make that much of a difference. The Saipan will pretty much still cause a whole bunch of floodings and fires and do a ton of dot damage. And even though that it's a premium, since you can obtain the Saipan for no monetary value and it's completely free through the Bureau, they said they reserve the right to nerf those types of ships. And I just kind of giggle about the people who spend all the doubloons to skip the Bureau and then their ship that they spent all those doubloons and money on just gets nerfed and basically isn't what they wanted it to be. Which is also why I don't like the Bureau as much. Going back to the game, I do launch some torpedoes at the Izumo, the tier 8 Japanese battleship. And I start opening up on him to try and cause some fires and to see if he'll damage con. I did launch one set very far to the left compared to where the torpedo indicator was aiming. Mainly because I figure when I started shooting he might want to try and run away from me. Which is exactly what he is doing. And I took the proper amount of aids so that I will land a few torpedoes. Unfortunately, the uh, Izumo is smart enough not to damage con the fires, and he damage cons after I land a couple of torpedoes. And now I can just smoke up and start farming him. Here I'm using AP, and don't ever be afraid to shoot AP at the upper belt of most battleships because you will be able to do a whole lot of chunk damage to them. But I switch back to HE to start setting some permanent fires on him. I get my first one and I am going to try and get a second one on him. I would usually try to get three fires on a ship but usually now some players actually do use fight fire with fire on their battleships so I just let them go once I set two fires. 
Our carrier spots their enemy DD. This DD was actually in a division with the Lexington that drove in. And he wasn't anywhere near to spot me even though I was located for most of the beginning of the game. I'm not really sure where their destroyer decided to go, but I know he wasn't really doing what he should have been. If he was contesting me, maybe his carrier divmate survives, but he didn't and their team suffered for it. If destroyers typically smoke up like you saw there, you can pretty much continue to shoot if your destroyer reloads fast enough and you can just continuously blind fire. Especially if you know you won't be spotted, don't be afraid to shoot. But anyway, because of the destroyer not really doing his job, this pretty much turned into a steamroll. Unfortunately, someone else killed off the Izumo. And here, the enemy Bismarck that's just left on his flank is just completely surrounded and torpedoes everywhere. I honestly feel a little bad for him. He does go down and now all that's left are two cruisers that have been kiting the entire match. We do have quite a bit of time left on the clock and there are only two enemy cruisers while we still have six ships including a carrier. So I would usually cap a base if this was closer but since we're just steamrolling them I am just going to go ahead and chase them and try to kill them off because I'm pretty sure that our team would be more than capable of killing off a low health Wichita and a full health Hipper. I am also doing this for the sake of content. There are two enemy ships remaining and I have three kills and there is potential for a Kraken and since we have so much time left in the game I think it might be possible to be able to kill off these two cruisers that's remaining it would have been nice if our team just left the Izumo to burn and die and got me my fourth kill just so it's a little easier to get the Kraken. Something I am worried about though while I try to chase this Kraken is my team capturing the base or this Wichita turning around and just YOLOing in and possibly catching me with his radar. Instead of following from behind them, I'm going to try and take a angle further to the left so that I can shoot them with my main guns and pretty much get some AP into their broadsides. This Wichita is turning broadside to our team and he is actually turning around which is one of the things I didn't want him to do. My torpedoes are just about to come back from reloading and I'm going to launch one to the left and one to the right. One is for if he decides to start kiting again, and the other is just in case he keeps charging in. I start opening up on him, trying to farm as much damage as possible. He does start turning broadside, but then he starts angling back in because I'm shooting AP, and he is using his radar to try and kill me off. I do just keep moving forward very slowly, because as I do this, the Wichita will shoot the island, and while I shoot around the island, the Wichita will sail into my shells, which is typically why you never want to be the one chasing the enemy ship around the island, and instead you want to be the one basically being chased. I am able to clean up that Wichita, and now all that's left is this Hipper, and since he's sailing broadside, I am just going to keep shooting AP at him. Unfortunately, that entire time that the Wichita and Hipper were spotted, no one shot the Hipper and did any damage to him, so we're basically trying to kill him off from full HP, and we have all of our battleships just sitting in the cap. I get my Confederate medal, and now we just need to try and kill him off as quickly as possible. He was shooting AP at me, and since the 203mm guns can't overmatch any destroyer at tier 7 or above, I can basically just stay angled and keep chasing him. If he does start shooting HE, I do have a lot of islands to try and take cover from. Unfortunately, our team seems like they're going to just stop in the cap and just capture the base instead of killing off this one cruiser who is pretty low on HP already. He is turning left to go behind the island and this is going to be quite unfortunate because I can't exactly see where he is and get accurate shots on him. I am just gonna 
basically tried to do my best and you can see our team is pretty much going to cap the base and I don't really have enough time to kill off the hipper. We are so close and with a few seconds remaining he is on one bar and then the team caps the base and unfortunately I am unable to get the Kraken. We have had many opportunities and unfortunately our teammates have I don't want to say stole the kills but didn't exactly do a whole lot to earn them and as you can see the next highest person was at 1800 and aside from my performance that's typically the types of performances you will see for the most part on patch day and possibly even patch week and longer especially now with tier 8 there's going to be a whole lot of people trying to grind for the ships and since this was a pretty big update, I'm pretty sure a whole lot of players have returned after quitting for some time. We were able to do 201,000 damage and 3,300 base XP. And this was my very first game in the Sumner. And of all the destroyers in the update, I think this will be my favorite since I really do enjoy the Fletcher and the Gearing. The build I was using is Vincent Mordoff. I have actually just got Mordoff in the store since they're bringing back a lot of the content from the past years and I never actually had Mordoff this whole time. I do think Mordoff is a little more valuable than William Halsey mainly because the base trait for Mordoff is a little more useful than Halsey because the small percentage of AP damage for destroyers is pretty negligible. But that's it for this video, I hope you guys enjoyed. Do leave a like and subscribe for more. Leave a comment down below for any ships you want to see in the future. But until next time, aloha.